So besides my knife, like I said, I got a little mini, mini survival kit in my knife sheath because it's always on my belt. So I got this sucker. And then I don't have a whole lot of axes. Actually, I only got one. But I've got, uh, this is the Grand's Forge Brook uh, Forest Axe. These are fantastic. They're expensive, but they're worth the they're worth the money. I mean, you look at the look at the way that that thing is is profiled. It's got that nice thin blade. You know, I love the forge marks. I love the fact that this is completely handcrafted. This thing chops like a winner. This this really goes through wood like you wouldn't believe. And you keep it hair shaving sharp, and it's just a beautiful piece. I absolutely love this axe. I don't use it very much just because. I didn't grow up using axes. Uh, I figured, I mean, I, I've done some camping in Canada and, and some cold weather camping. This would mostly be what I take, you know, for cold winter camping if I have to chop a lot of wood. But there, it is really fantastic. Now, for most of my life, I used this. This is an Ontario 18-inch machete. Um, I modified it by, uh, it, it, was a, it was a D handle, the molded D handle. One, the ones that have scales with the little rivets, those scales will eventually crack, get loose, and fall off. They just suck. But the molded handles are great. However, the, the knuckle guard is one of the worst things that they could have done. Because when you're holding that machete and you get a glancing blow on something and it twists in your hand, that knuckle guard buries itself in, in, in your knuckles, apparently. And it's horribly painful. I remember after a day's worth of using it with that knuckle guard, my hand was so swollen and red, you couldn't actually see, you know, we can hardly see them now, but it was it was really painful, trust me. Um, and so I cut that off with a dremel and a little saw, and I you know smoothed it out. In fact, I cut it off with that saw that I just showed you on my knife. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I put some bicycle inner tube over the handle, and I wrapped it with electrician's tape right here. There's a couple of videos on YouTube, uh, one by Jeepzilla Joe and another one by a guy named Cole Hain. Um, they know what they're talking about. They use a lot of machetes in a lot of environments. And they describe what's called a pinch grip, where you hold the machete like so, and you allow it to rotate in your hand, so you let the machete do the work. It used to be that I held it by the metal and used this kind of, you know, this larger area of the handle to do that, but I found it was better just to put the rubber and, and hold it like so. So I've used this thing for everything, from cleaning fish and crab, to poking the fire, a draw knife, um, for clearing brush, it's, it's out chopped any axe I put it against except this guy, but I found the machete to be very, very versatile. I grew up using them. Um, my grandfather, you know, you know, in the tropics, we used them on the, on his farm for bananas and just mowing, you know, even mowing the lawn using a machete. So I love machetes. They're very, very versatile if you know how to use them. I like the Ontario because it's got a thicker blade than most production machetes, so it works better on North American, uh, growth, you know, the wood, the harder woods and so on. And also, do yourself a favor, do not buy the machete with the saw back. I hate them. All the saw back does on a machete is chew up your sheath. It gets snagged on everything and it makes it so you can't use it as a draw knife. You grab that, it's going to hurt. Or you can, you know, you can grab the sheath and use it as a draw knife, I guess, in that case. But also, if you're sawing something with your machete, and your hand slips forward because, you know, that saw all of a sudden binds like it always does. You're going to, you know, it'll cut through your skin real well. Just doesn't do a very good job on wood. Um, so, yeah, just get the plain old machetes. They work great. Um, if you can pick up these plastic sheets, they're fantastic. They come with a little carbide sharpener right here. Um, I don't use it as often. I usually have a, a file, a metal file tucked into here. But the way that those work is you put the machete in. You line up the carbide bit with the edge, you push it on so that it's locked in there, and then you put the machete and the sheath down on a hard surface, like a rock, a table, and then while it's on the hard surface, you draw the machete out through the, through the cutter. You don't put your finger here and pull it out, you're going to lose your finger. And these actually work pretty well. They put a crude edge on there, but it's an edge and it keeps it sharp. So anyway, um, I got interested in other types of machetes, so I started looking into Golocks. So here's one that I bought from company down in Australia. I had to make the handle for it because the, the climate up here cracked the, the handle that it came with. It was made out of buffalo horn. These are great. They're, they're, they're thicker, they have a nice distal taper, and they chop very much like an axe. Um, in fact, I think they chop better than machetes, especially on harder undergrowth and harder woods. Only problem with this sucker is it's heavy. And you know, I'm not a terribly small guy, but this thing wore me out. I mean, it, it, it chops 
beautifully, but it was so front heavy and just, it's almost unwieldy. So it's pretty, but, um, oh, and I made the sheath for it. It's kind of amateurish, but eh, it worked. Now here's where I get excited. This is the new Golok machete from Condor Knife and Tool. And I made the sheath for it. Um, you know, this is where I keep my little file in it so I can touch it up. I'll open it up and show you what it looks like. This is a real user. It's got a walnut handle. I love this ball, this shape of the handle, because I can just grab it like so, especially when I'm doing a lazy chop. You can see I have the same lanyard on all of them, where I, you know, around the back of my hand and then over the top. But this thing has a really nice narrow profile. It starts off real nice and thick, quarter inch thick, gets down to about an eighth of an inch. It's got a you know, factory razor sharp convex edge and it chops. This is my new tool that I carry. I, mean, I carry my knife, but if I have something bigger, I got my Golok. It's, it's a fantastic tool. It chops almost as well as the Grand Sword Brook Axe, in my, in my opinion. And again, it's, I've used it. I mean, you can see, you know, I've, I've worn it. I've, uh, you know, it, it's, I love it. I absolutely love it. And the fact is, you can pick it up for about $25. This is one of the best values in large chopping tools that I can imagine. 25 bucks, I mean, you can't even get a cheap machete for that in some places. If, if money becomes a little bit more available, I'm probably going to buy a few just to put in storage. Now, <laughs> this next knife I got just because I wanted it. I lusted after it. This is the, the new Condor Knife and Tool Parang machete. And it, you can see it's a little bit longer. It's got a 17 inch blade. This thing is a dedicated chopper. I mean, this this just screams zombie killer all over it. I absolutely love it. I mean, the lines are just gorgeous. It's got that beautiful walnut handle, um, full convex edge all the way down. It's got that nice distal taper. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit front heavy. Um, this right here is a dedicated chopper. I'd use it if I had some serious brush clearing, you know, to do, or coconuts or trees or whatever to chop down. Um, out of the two, I'd probably still go with the Golok just because it's a lot quicker in the hand, a lot you know, lighter and easier to pack. But this thing is something to be reckoned with. I just got it yesterday, so I haven't even cut anything with it. In fact, it's so pretty, I don't know if I want to cut anything with it. This guy I use all the time, but uh, unfortunately I can't actually go out and demonstrate any cutting with it right now. It's, it's raining and it's the middle of the night. But yeah, these are beautiful. And again, I got this thing, this beautiful knife that's made out of 1075 steel. It's wonderfully tempered. I mean, again... I got it for $35, including shipping. <laughs> if you could find them in stock, I'd say pick these up because um, I would I would put these toe to toe with any of the big custom you know Gologs or choppers because uh, I'm, I'm sure those are fantastic and beautifully handmade. But for what you're getting for the price, you can't beat these. These are just amazing. So anyway, those are my opinions. I like big knives. You could probably get away with smaller ones, um, but uh, I found great utility in this size. You know, honestly, this right here, this this combination has worked very well for me. And like I said, I've used I've used a machete everywhere from you know northern Canada to the Caribbean to I've used it to cut snow blocks for igloos. I've used it to open coconuts. I've used it to cut down trees to cut firewood. I've chopped through frozen maple. I've used it for processing fish when I was out on the ocean processing crab, cutting up sharks to put in my, my crab traps. Um, you know, I use it to, to hold the ember for a bow drill sometimes. It, it's just, you know, it's a useful tool. And again, like I said, if you know how to use one, great. And some people will never see a need for it, but this is what I like. And besides that, I, I, I have some sort of fetish with them too, because, man, this thing is just pretty. <laughs> I'm very proud to have it. But uh, anyway, there's a quick little review. Again, here's the just so you can see it, the Golok, not the Golok, but the Condor Knife and Tool uh, Parang Machete and, whoops, their Golok, which are both fantastic tools for the money. And, um, like I said, this is my new go-to tool. I'm going to retire the Ontario, and this one's going to stay on the wall as a decorative piece. You know, the only time that the axe is coming out is if it's the middle of winter and i got some heavy chopping to do. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'm out.